uh, to order again. <clears throat> Move to our delegation uh, 6.1, Sander, <clears throat> excuse me, Sander Rose Bone Grindle. We have Jaron Newfeld on the line to uh, present our audited financials. Welcome, Jaron. Perfect. Thank you very much. Uh, so our audit report can be found on page two of the financial statements and address the mayor and council of the District of Tumble Ridge. It states that we've audited the consultant financial statements of the District of Tumble Ridge, which comprise of the statement of financial position as at December 31st, 2019, operations and accumulated changes in net financial assets, cash flows for the year then ended. In our opinion, the, the company financial the accompanying consolidated financial statements present fairly, in all material respects, the financial position of the district as at December 31st, 2019, and the results of its operations and cash flows for the year then ended in accordance with Canadian public sector accounting standards. We conducted our audit in accordance with Canadian generally accepted auditing standards, and we believe that the audit evidence that we've obtained is sufficient and appropriate to provide a basis for our opinion. Management is responsible for the preparation and fair presentation of the consolidated financial statements in accordance with Canadian public sector accounting standards and for such internal control as management determines is necessary to enable the preparation of the financial statements that are free from material misstatement, whether due to fraud or error. As auditors, our objective is to obtain reasonable assurance about whether the consolidated financial statements are as a whole free from material misstatement, whether due to fraud or error, and to issue an auditor's report that includes our opinion. As part of an audit in accordance with Canadian generally accepted auditing standards, we exercise professional judgment and maintain professional steps throughout the audit. We also identify and assess the risks of material misstatement of the consolidated financial statements. We obtain an understanding of the internal controls relevant to the audit. We evaluate the appropriateness of the accounting policies used. We conclude on the appropriateness of management's use of the going concern basis. We evaluate the overall presentation structure and content of the consolidated financial statements and we communicate with those charged with governments regarding, among other matters, the plan, scope, and timing of the audit and significant audit findings, including any significant deficiencies in internal controls that we identified in our audit. So in other words, another clean audit report to the district. So. Perfect. <clears throat> Thank you, Jaron. Is there any questions from Council? Councillor Howe? Yeah, can you just walk me through where I can find the uh, in <clears throat> the savings for the district of Tumbler Ridge or what we made from investment income? Uh, investment income. Uh, so if you turn to page five of the financial statements, you're going to see the statement of operations and accumulated surplus. Uh, specifically to your question about uh, your return on investment. Uh, You'll see under revenues, there's a return of investment line, and the 2019 actual was $591,775. Uh, total uh, savings for the district, uh, if you turn back to page four, uh, you'll see your cash account of uh, about $11.5 million, and then you also have your investments account, which is about $18.7 million. that answer your question, yeah. Councillor Hall? Yeah, and just one more question. The cash account that we have there, that cash account is what we would use until the next taxation period, until July 1st. Is that is that correct? Uh, no, that, that would actually be more uh, your accumulated surplus in, in note 10 of the financial statements. That gives you a breakdown of what uh, your various surpluses are. Uh, so your surpluses can be invested or sitting in a cash account, and so there's a breakdown in there. So when you go to note 10, uh, your operating funds that are carrying forward, uh, $20,095,300, that would basically be what you have for operating funds carrying forward that from December 31st, 2019, that you could be utilizing uh, in the current year for operations, you know, assuming if you had absolutely no other income coming in during this year. Okay. Follow up to that? Yeah, just like, um, yeah, I know, I'll, I'll, I'll review this with our uh, okay. CAO. Thank you. Any other questions, Council? Okay, thank you very much, Jaron. I appreciate the update and thank you for the good work. 
Oh, no, no worries, and thank you to you guys and the financial staff there. Uh, it's really great working with Selma and Laura and the whole team there. They, uh, you know, really enjoyable to deal with and uh, did a great job. So excellent, great to hear. Thank you. Excellent. Thanks so much, guys. You have a great rest of your evening. You too. Bye now. Okay, moving on to participant exiting. Karen Newfeld. Consent agenda seven point one. Recommendation, please. Councilor Rakalka. Then all items in the Monday, May 4, 2020 consent agenda be moved for information. Seconder. Councilor Majinski. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Anyone, any, anything council would like to discuss? Councilor Norbury? Well, I'd like to bring up uh, 7.2, the Hazleton BC Gaming Grant. For discussion. Seconder. Councilor Rakalka. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Councilor Norbury? Thank you. I want to bring this up for discussion as I think that Hazleton is on the right track to making it easier for smaller communities to apply for the BC Gaming Grant. I know in organizations that I'm a part of, it is difficult for communities such as ourselves to be able to apply for these gaming grants, and they are they're pretty soluble. So I would, I would like to make a motion that we uh, send a letter of endorsement. I can... I can Yes, please. Um, yeah, okay, I'll make a motion now. I'll make a motion that uh, the District of Tumble Ridge send, send a letter of endorsement for the Village of Hazleton's resolution for community gaming grant. Seconder, Councilor Kalka. Any discussion? Councilor Majinski. So for the gaming grant, is this for the municipality or the district to apply for, or is this for uh, nonprofits that we're putting this to report on for? I believe it's for both. For both. Yeah, so. Councilor Norbury. I can just add to that a little bit in that the, the there's a lot of requirements to the gaming grant that are quite difficult for communities our size, including um, board membership sizes, as well as um, meeting certain, um, certain other requirements. That it's just, it really makes it difficult for communities, um, municipalities, and nonprofits to, to apply for. Mm -hmm. Any other discussion? Call to question. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Thank you. Anything else council would like to discuss? Councilor Lehman? I'm wondering about uh, 7.5. For discussion? Yes. Seconder? Councilor Majinski? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Thank you. Councilor Lehman? Yeah. <laughs> The, uh, they're asking for a reduction in rent for running the golf course restaurant. And I know it's not, we're trying not to uh, help businesses or uh, give them an unfair advantage by cutting their rent. So I'm not sure how or what we can do in this case. Councilor Norbury. Thank you. So, in my opinion, I think we should be um, deferring the decision whether we, what we're going to do with the rent, as they are in the middle of the process to, you know, applying for the rent subsidy program. And I think that may, um, you know, we might put in the cart before the horse, so to speak, before we know what the answer to that is. As well as there is a uh, there is a question in here regarding how does the proposed tax changes affect their, um, their, their rent. And we're still waiting back for that information. I posed that to staff. So we're still waiting to see what that's going to be. And, and I also brought up with, with the owner the option to um, apply for the, the worker subsidy program. I mean, it's Ultimately, it's not our business. It's up to them what they do. But if we're looking at um, overhead costs, there are some options there which are still being explored. I think it would be prudent to sort of wait to see how that plays out. Councilor Majinski. Thank you, Mr. I also did uh, reach out to Ms. Bell uh, about uh, looking at, into re rebates to the province and, or relief funds uh, as a business owner. So I think that we uh, probably, and it even says in here, a 75% uh, re reduction, and that would actually be more of a reduction than what she's proposing to ask for here. So mm -hmm. it might be beneficial for her to research that and see if she can go that route. And then... Um, it saved her a little bit more money as well. Mm -hmm. okay. Any other comments? 
Anything else council would like to discuss in the consent agenda? Okay, moving on to bylaws 8.1. Financial plan bylaw number 686, 2020 to 2024 financial plan. A, rep a report of the finance dated May 4th, 2020. Seeking first three readings of the financial plan. Council Kerb. That council gives first reading the district's coverage 2020 to 2024 financial plan bylaw number 686 2020. Seconder. Councilor Majinski. Discussion. Councilor Howe. I am uh, unable to uh, support this motion at this time as I'm still waiting for more information from the finance department. Um, so when I get that information, I'll be able to vote, but I can't vote for it tonight. Councilor Korkowka. Okay, Councilor, I'll share this information he's waiting for. I mean, we, Council we, we all come in and talk to staff and everything else, and Councilor Norbury just mentioned it here before that. <clears throat> but we don't hear what the questions are going to the staff, and, you know, maybe this maybe changes other people's opinion and, and vote. Councillor Howe. Yeah, I can elaborate a little bit as uh, I've been requesting information for a little while and that information was shared by email to council and it was given to us in a, I don't know what you call it, an addendum or part of this package tonight uh, that was given to me today and it's still not clear to me on where we are with our savings. My concern is uh, I want to have a better understanding of how much money we have in savings for years going forward for some of the big spends that we have coming up in future years. Uh, and at this time, that information is not clear to me if we are dipping into our savings or if and by how much. Um, uh, so and until I have a better understanding, uh, we have a, a couple of major spends coming in the next few years. Uh, I cannot vote in favor of this until I know what uh, our overall financial picture is. Is that okay. enough information? Councillor, Councillor Norbury. Thank you. Um, you know, in some previous reports, I recall that in terms of some capital projects we have coming up, about $18 million in asset management that um, we're, we're looking at. So there is a, quite a large amount that um, is sort of allocated in the future. So mm -hmm. I could share that information. Mm -hmm. Okay, any other comments? Called a question on the recommendation. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Thank you. Second recommendation, Councillor Norbury. The council gives the second reading of the District of Cumberland Ridge 2020-2024-2020. Seconder. Councillor Majinski. Discussion? Called a question. All in favor? Opposed? Very. Thank you. Third recommendation, please. Councilor Majinski. The council gives a third reading of the District of Tumbler Ridge 2020-2024 financial plan bylaw number 686 2020. Seconder. Councilor Norbury. Discussion. All in favor? Opposed? Carry. Thank you. 8.2. Tax rate bylaw number 687 2020. Report from the Director of Finance dated May 4th, 2020, seeking readings of the tax rate bylaw. Recommendation, please. Councilor Kirby. The Council gives first reading of the District of Columbia Ridge 2020 tax rate bylaw number 687 2020. Seconder. Councilor Norbury. Discussion. Councilor Howe. I also cannot vote in favor of this bylaw tonight, or sorry, this uh, recommendation tonight. Uh, is I don't feel we've done justice for our residents with uh, residential tax rate. Uh, that we've given a business tax rate cut to businesses, but not one to residents. So I can't vote in favor of this tonight. Okay, thank you. Any other discussion? Councilor Krakowka? <clears throat> yeah, I feel the same way. And I just throw it back out. I know we further on in the agenda is the task force surveys and all that. But I'm just saying, is, is there anything here that, you know, council as a whole? Good look at doing for the residents. I know some said it was too early, didn't have enough information. Um, I know I've been sharing all the stuff that the Peace Region has been doing, other municipalities, including you know Taylor, Bruce Coopy, Hudson Hope, 
<clears throat> like these other communities are, you know, doing it. I mean, I, I mean, it's not trying to change your guys' mind. Is there any thought that it's something we can do for residential tax? I put that back to Sports Council. Hmm. Any discussion, Council Majinski? I know when we had this debate, uh, I was really on the fence on it. Um, I just didn't have a clear idea of what would be another benefit to the community or the sorry the residents. Um, and I'm still on the fence. I would definitely want to see something for residents. I just, at this time, I don't know. And I just don't know even if a tax break is enough. Like, you know, I think there could be possibly other ideas. And that's why this task force was created, to try to maybe come up with a better idea and an understanding of where people are at and what they would like to see. Because I've had two individuals come up to me, and that was it. After after the meeting, no, nothing prior to any of this. Um, and. So I'd like to just see if something from the task force um, can help us out. The information gathered, hopefully. Yeah. Any other discussion? Okay. Councillor Lehman. Thank you, Mayor. Yeah, I'm. I have the same problem because I've only had two people come up to me and discuss the the residential tax rate, and it, uh, you know, it really didn't get that much attention and I nobody's I just there's not any real backlash the only thing I'm thinking of is instead of the three percent increase if we just negate that I, I don't know if we can do that or not but instead of having the three and the four percent increase for light industry uh, I mean that's still not going to be that much but I just because there hasn't been really a lot of negative comments that I've heard. I just I just don't see why we, we'd even want to consider it. Okay, thank you. Councilor Majinski. Um, this may be a bit off topic, but I just want to put the question out there to the rest of council and possibly staff and hear if you've had any feedback from the business taxes, if you've had a thank you or any reckon uh, recognition for us doing that rebate of a hundred percent and see how many businesses are appreciative of this mm -hmm. I have not I have had a couple um, and it is going to help it's um, a helping hand but you know it's it's very uh, unclear and uncertain um, the future so <clears throat> hopefully it's enough help for for that business to stay afloat but uh, the the two business owners I've talked to definitely are appreciative. Any other comments? Um, I we did get a bit of information recently about um, a rental um, percentage in town, and correct me if I'm wrong, Miss Torval, but I think it was fifty percent um, of the residents are renting. Is that was that correct from uh, our finance department there? Um, I did not receive that information. Okay. Okay. Yeah, well, I'll follow up on that, but I think it was preliminary numbers. It was quite a bit. Yeah. Sorry, Ms. Torval. Yeah, that's the information I got from uh, our finance department. Approximately. Of residents rent yeah so that's quite a bit for sure okay and also council there is um, I think there's a bit of a help on this uh, 8.3 item as well for residents so um, but also I'm, I'm definitely uh, putting high hopes on this task force uh, to come out with recommendations to to help our residents as well any other comments Okay, call the question. All in favor? Opposed? Carry. Thank you. Recommendation two, please, Councilor Nobri. The council gets the second reading of the District Council 2020 Tax Rates Bylaw number 687-2020. Seconder. Councilor Majinski. Comments. Call the question. All in favor? Opposed? Carry. Thank you. Count, uh, recommendation three, please. Councilor Majinski. 
The council gives a third reading of the District of Tumbler Ridge 2020 tax rates bylaw number 687-2020. Seconder. Councilor Norbury. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Thank you. 8.3. Alternative tax collection scheme <coughs> 2020 Report from the Director of Finance, May 4th, 20. Seeking readings and adoption of the Alternative Tax Collection Scheme Bylaw. Recommendation, please. Councilor Nobry. Uh, I'd like to move to um, one of the alternative recommendations. I'd like to move to Alternative 1. That the District of Tumbler Ridge adopt an alternative tax scheme with a tax due date of July 2nd for all property taxes and a 0% penalty charge for the Class 1 residential for the 2020 tax collection season only and a 10% penalty charge applied for October 1st. 2020 for all other tax, all other taxes. Seconder. Councilor Majinski, discussion. Councilor Norbury. So why I chose this alternative to the recommendation is that residents will see a zero penalty charge for any property taxes this year um, for, the, for the entire tax season and they can get caught up. And for the, the second portion of the 10% penalty is that we do need to make sure that other in, other tax areas pay in a in a timely manner and don't use this as an opportunity to you know, let their let their taxes slide. That we do need this revenue income. Any other comments, Sir Hal? So this would mean that residents would not have to pay their 2020 taxes until July 2021, right? The scheme, so, correct? I would assume so, yeah. Okay, my, my concern about that is doubling up of the taxes of 2021. So, if you're having a hard time paying taxes now and we give you a one year deferral on your taxes, which Councillor Lehman just stated he hasn't had anybody say that they're going to have a problem paying the taxes in Tumblr Ridge, two people, sorry, said that, that they're going to have a problem paying their taxes. So, when we push this out one more year, if somebody's taxes is $2,000, now they got to come up with $4,000 in July 2021. So to me, I don't think that that is, is a good move by us. It could also push us out another year of having a vacant property. So if somebody doesn't pay for the property, it sits there. We don't know that it's sitting there. It's depreciating. It's getting worse and worse. And that come 2021, when we go looking for that tax money, the people have walked away from that home and we get stuck with another property that we don't want in Tumblr Ridge, environmental issues, uh, stuff like that. So that, that's my concern of pushing it out too far. Um, that's my comments on it. Okay, thank you, Councilor Nobry. Thank you, and I agree that if the if they're unable to pay their bill, um, failing to pay their property taxes now, just doubling up on it a year later is, I mean, it won't help them either. Um, well, we can we can look at that bridge when we come across to it. Like we're you know we're still in the let's see how this is affecting our residents and our community first, and you know for for myself, I'm I'm hoping that. Maybe this is something that the mayor's task force can look at as well moving forward. Like maybe, maybe there is, we had some great debate about this previously. Maybe we'll get some great input through the task, um, through the task force. And if we're finding that we're having these issues, we can, we can adjust you know, moving forward next year. Any other comments? So uh, I'm, not really in favor of this recommendation just for the reason of a zero percent penalty charge is basically a voluntary um, uh, letter from the district saying could you please pay your taxes but we won't charge you any penalty for not um, so I, I, I don't think paying our taxes is voluntary I, I believe we we need to do that and that's why these penalty charges are applied um, so I'm not really in favor of the zero percent penalty charge um, uh, more in favor of the uh, first recommendation myself just because of the fact that if if a penalty charge isn't applied if zero percent is is enacted then there's real no motivation for anybody to pay their taxes um, so I, I think that's I don't think we want to get into a voluntary situation here <laughs> Councilor Majinski uh, it sounds like you're saying that they can get away without paying their taxes 
I don't believe that's the case. Absolutely, they can. Well, they, they can get away with it without having to pay interest interest on it, but they'll still have to pay the taxes. Eventually. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we're giving them virtually one year extension without having to pay a penalty. Mm -hmm. I think that's a fair fair thing to do, um, especially because of the uncertainty right now. So mm -hmm. I'm in favor of the recommendation. Okay. Because we also are getting potentially if other like heavy industrial don't pay on time, we get that ten percent, but most likely they will pay on time because that could be quite hefty for them. So mm -hmm. Okay. Other comments? Councilor Norbury? You know, and, and some of the pe some of the people that uh, did reach out, I, I posed them this question, like what if you know, like there was they were concerned about paying penalties. Now this is a way that we can say though like we understand things may not be the greatest right now. You're uncertain about your future. If if you can't do this, there won't be any penalty to you. And that's and that's what I like about the the zero percent penalty is that people who are uncertain, well maybe they can pay their taxes in October, September when they can get cut off. January. And most people they understand the importance of paying their taxes. I just don't think this is the time where we should be enacting penalties. Okay. Thank you, Councillor Hall. Well, I don't think we're necessarily enacting the penalty. The penalty has always been there, right? but it's just we're delaying the date of when the penalty is. We're, we're not going out and saying we're going to penalize it. What is it, July 2nd, usually, when you get the 10% if it's not paid by then? So pushing it out three months, I, I think, is a reasonable amount of time, which is in recommendation number one. Pushing it out a year is too far. And, and my concern is that it starts people on a slippery slope. If you can't pay the $2,000 in taxes, and now you got to pay that for... Uh, that you could get into a, a situation where we have to take the property back. And I don't know how many properties, then we don't have a tax sale in September of this year that pushes that out again. And then we have double the amount of tax sales, maybe even greater uh, because of the delay that we had. I, I think that that is a fair window. We've given them three more months to say, hey, like, you know, you don't need to pay it right, right away. We've given you three months. It gives us a little more time for people to figure out what they need to do. And a lot of people get their taxes taken off on their mortgage that you know it's it's included in their mortgage and it's part of their payment system and their plan and it's it's coming off anyways so and and again for us to not collect that money to have a percentage on it you know it's kind of doesn't make much sense if the residential reduction didn't make sense either right so compounding it to 2021 would definitely make it harder i think council majinski my concern is for um low-income families or um people that are on tight budgets where they budget for the whole year so they put away a certain amount and if they have to come up with maybe three more months of extra um, um, of the cost of a mortgage to backlog it a bit you know nine months or whatever it might be hard it might be a bit of a stretch especially if they've been out of a job or their place of work has been cut off already for five weeks and going on longer and they don't they didn't foresee that at all so they could be already behind the eight ball on that, so that's my concern there. Okay, got uh, Councillor Norbury, Lehman, and Hal. Councillor Norbury. Yeah, thank you. So when it comes to low-income people, depending on, I don't, I don't want to you know, dissuade you from your from your thoughts there, Councillor Majewski. As you know, I think we should always be thinking about people who are vulnerable and at-risk members of our community. But if somebody is low-income, so if they're on set payments per month they their their income hasn't changed and if they have people have lost jobs because of their of this situation there is quite a bit of money available to them you know the two hundred two thousand dollars a month for the CERB plus other, other things so I think in terms of the low income and the at-risk population I don't know how much this truly affects them um, my thought is if we are looking at Next year, and if they have to pay, well, well another two hundred dollars. So if they're, if someone's paying two thousand dollars, is another two hundred dollars going to be that big of a burden? And how much of the population, you know, are, are we thinking about is going to need this? Right? Like, is it five percent? Is it ten? Is it twenty? Right. That's that's the struggle that I'm that I'm dealing with now. Is like, what percentage of people um, are going to be hit financially enough? And you know, I'm concerned that there will be quite a few. You know. Uh, Councillor Lehman. Thank you, Mayor. 
Uh, I would think that most of the low-income families are not homeowners, they're renters, and they shouldn't be paying the taxes because the landlord should be paying the taxes. So I, I think that's maybe stretching it a bit. Their perspective, yeah. Councillor Howe? So what what does this do for the other taxes that we have to remit to the government? Does that, we don't get a delay from remitting the money that we have to remit to the government, right? That still has to be paid in August 1. So we, we, we've still got to front the money for the people that aren't paying their taxes. Right? This is not just a this is not just a district amount that we're dealing with. This is the entire tax bracket. This is all classes within the residential that you have to pay that we are going to front for these people. I'm not interested in doing that for the district of Tumbler Ridge. That is a bad financial move for us. If you told me that I don't have to pay taxes for two year, or for a year or two year and a half, I will not pay my taxes in Tumbler Ridge. I will put the money in the bank. I will make five percent interest on my money, and I will come in with more money in my jeans than what the district of Tumbler Ridge should get. So that is a bad move to delay it that long. We're already funding them. August first has to go out, right? August first we have to pay it. Yeah, August, September. So bad move. I think this, we should not be doing this. This is the first one is even being generous in my mind. So, mm -hmm. any other comments? Okay, call the question on alternative number one. All in favor? Opposed? Defeated. Thank you. Recommendation, please. Councilor Kirby. That the district of Tumbler Ridge adopt an alternate tax scheme with a tax due date of July second, twenty twenty, for all the property classes and a 10% penalty charge applied on October 1st, 2020 for all property classes. Seconder, Councillor Lehman. Discussion? Okay, call the question, all in favor? Opposed? Carried, thank you. Second recommendation, please. Councillor Kalka. Councillor Gis. First reading of the district of Summers, alternate tax scheme by number 69, 2020. Seconder, Councillor Lehman. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Thank you. Number three, Councillor Kalka. Council give second reading of the District of Bridge alternative tax scheme bylaw number 689-2020. Seconder, Councillor Majinski. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Thank you. Number four, Councilor Kokalka. Council gives third reading of the District of Tumbler Ridge alternative task scheme by law number 689-2020. Seconder. Councilor Lehman. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Thank you. Number five. Councilor Lehman. That Council adopt the District of Tumbler Ridge alternative task scheme by law number 689-2020 as presented. Seconder. Councilor Korkalka, discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Thank you. I just wanted to mention, too, uh, thank you very much, Ms. Schreiber, for an excellent uh, uh, couple of reports here and, and uh, some really good alternatives there, too. Thank you. New business 9.1 Auditor's Report and Financial Statement. Recommendation, please. Councilor Kirby. The Council approves the 2019 Auditor's Report and Financial Statement as presented by Sander, Rowe, Cole, and Griddle. Second. Councilor Krakowka. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Thank you. 9.2, of course, operation amid COVID-19. report from the Director of Community Services and Facilities dated May 4th, 2020. Excuse me, regarding golf course operation. Recommendation, Councillor Krokalka. Councillor received the report from the Seconder. Councillor Norbury. All in favor. Carried. Thank you. Councillor Krokalka. Yeah, sure. I'll start off. I think it was a report well done. Uh, Mr. Orbell, through to your staff. <clears throat> I think they uh, came out with a lot of ideas and stuff in regards to the rules and stuff like that to be able to open the, the golf course to the residents and. Uh, Visitors, I guess, if hopefully more residents or membership for the visitors. But uh, 
I think it's great to open it. I think people need to get out there. I mean, uh, it's a pretty big course to do social distancing on, and hopefully with the rules and stuff that have been into place here, and cards are going to be printed out, and hopefully people follow it. Uh, I guess my question to staff would be, and I was in talk to Mr. Orville, and is a marshal. Is there any thought from staff side in regards to a marshal? As far as I know, yes, but Ms. Torval? There will be a marshal, yes. Councillor so, Cookout. So if I may, I know when I was going to talk to Ms. Torval, and I don't want to put words under her mouth, but first, it was talked about maybe just using some of the groundkeeper staff when they have time and stuff. Is it a total different position? It will be a different position, there yes. There will be dedicated employees to march the grounds. Yes. Councillor Kukowka. Not that I'm going to have a golfer, but I'm going to take a lot of time here. Um, <laughs> I am going to go with something that Council Norbury talked about a few meetings ago, uh, mentioning that when we, you know, this is a time to start putting uh, money out and start creating jobs and doing all that. <clears throat> and I hope with us opening the golf course that we're looking at using our local, whether it's 80 summer students. And I'm not looking at, to give direction on who to hire and when to hire. That's not obviously my job, but I'm hoping staffs fall on that concept. That Council Norbury brought about trying to make sure we are using locals as much as possible. Filling those positions, I would just hope that's what we're looking at. Yes, absolutely. Any other comments? Yeah. Councillor Lehman? There's just a, uh, this is all very good. The only, uh, one of the concerns I have is remove on course trash cans. Um, uh, I think people are already bad enough not throwing trash in the trash cans as it is. If you take them away, that's I think that's only going to compound the problem. I think when people throw their garbage in, when the next morning when the grounds crew goes around and cleans those up, anything that's on there should be, by all accounts of what I hear now, shouldn't be alive anymore or shouldn't be able to be spread anymore. So, I mean, if they can put it in a... A container and then somebody's dedicated to doing that I think we could probably alleviate a lot of that trash that's going to be unfortunately on the course because people are not very good at taking their trash home absolutely good point Council. Um, I had a, <clears throat> a question regarding the, the garbage cans are they like the bear safe cans down there no they're just um, open baskets with cage around them just small ones both yay big Okay, and I think if, if that's the case, there really isn't a problem. I mean, if they're, if they're like those bear safe cans, whatever, like, you know, I know the the virus can survive, allegedly, for up to three days on those surfaces, so that would be my concern. Mm -hmm. But if they're the open cans, I think we need to have them because, yeah, if, if you look at the Toronto Blank Post Office, right, people, it's, it's, it's clean recycling, it's clean paper, and people are, are quite upset and they're leaving it. They're leaving it thrown about, so I think that you should have garbage cans down there. People would be using it. Good point. Yeah, Councillor Lehman. Thank you, Mayor. The only other, the only other thing too is uh, the driving range, because I think social dist or physical distancing shouldn't be a problem. The other thing is picking up the balls. Every time they bring, when they bring the balls in, they get washed in bleach. So they should be sanitized when they go out again. So I think that's something maybe that we could be looking at as well. Yeah, I believe there's a plan in place for the driving range there. It was in the report. Um, Ms. Ms. Torval, could we get uh, Mr. Pisani to explain a couple of the plans in place? To yes, Mr. Pisani. Sure, sure. In relation to the driving range itself? Please. Yes, so we went out there and we measured it, and uh, we will be able to keep a minimal distance of six feet easily there. There's a lot of space there, and as the counselor was saying, we have a procedure and a plan for the falls to ensure that uh, we'll have the appropriate signage, and I brought signage here to illustrate that we're trying to cover every area of the operation to make sure that people are informed, along with uh, you know, participation of the staff. The staff are well informed because they've created a lot of the signage. And a lot of it is going to be education, watching it, mm -hmm. and, and correcting behaviors if we have to. Right. But uh, in terms of the driving range, plenty of room. Mm -hmm. Plenty of room, and uh, I, don't, I don't see that as a potential problem as well. Perfect. Okay, any other comments, Councillor Howe? Uh, just one in there, removal of benches. I mean, I 
I guess I could see why you'd want to remove a bench, but I, myself, I don't find that's necessary. We didn't go around the district and remove every bench where people can sit down at. There's a lot of seniors who use the golf course, and if they need to take a break and sit down, then you keep your hands to yourself, right? Mm -hmm. So I, I don't think that's necessary. Um, the only other question I have is, do we have a scheduled date? Do we have an idea of when we want to go? Uh, council, Mr. Pesani? Sure. Mr. Pesani? We, we are in for a soft open uh, this weekend. I uh, specifically want to be open for Mother's Day. And uh, we have the golf courts. Everything is in operation. We're going to try and staff it up the best we can. Mm -hmm. uh, next, uh, next week, we're having an actual interview. Or sorry, this week, interviews. And uh, yeah, we hope to be in real good shape. I mean, it's, it's a lot of effort, and I want to also, if I could, if I may, uh, just commend the staff's efforts. They have been really working hard on this. Absolutely. And we all have been uh, focused on trying to address all the safety concerns and follow the recommended guidelines. Mm -hmm. you know, we've, we've had a lot of conversations also with the, the local uh, golf groups, uh, both private and uh, municipal. And, and uh, yeah, you know, I, I think we're in really good shape, and you know, I just want to commend my staff for working hard on it. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I agree with you, Councillor Howe. I, I, and I've seen the benches there. A lot of those benches are concrete as well. So it would definitely be, a, I think, a struggle to, to remove and then reinstall. Maybe if we could uh, possibly just put some rope around them or, or signs saying something like that. Councillor Howe? Yeah, like, and do we need, need to have a vote about that type of stuff to remove that stuff out, like what Councillor Lehman has talked about? I mean, to me, it seems to be a lot of head nodding in here. Everybody's like, yeah, that sounds good. If somebody has a real objection about any of that, can these just be suggestions that staff just change as they go or what? I, that's my assumption. Um, suggestions and council, if, if you don't agree with any of these, please speak up. Councillor How, or sorry, Councillor <laughs> Breland Korkowka. You have similar haircuts, I understand. <laughs> my, mine's getting a little more than, than yourself, <laughs> Councillor How. Hopefully I'll be able to, you know, I'll get some rolling or something. <laughs> um, you know, I think if we're <laughs> if we are wanting direction from staff, we really should be making motions because, yeah, not everyone's piping in. I think just for clarity of staff, we should be making motions. Okay. Um, okay. Councilor Lehman. Thank you, Mayor. And in that case, I'd like to make a motion that sorry. people that don't follow the rules somehow get penalized either there, there has to be consequences and I think the same as everything else if if you don't want to abide by the rules then you don't need to be there yeah and, and, and I agree with you but I, I do think that, that that would be more of a management uh, decision well I realize that yeah Councilor Krakowka. Yeah, so I think Councilor Eamon already hit a bit of it. And that's the thing I'm curious from Mr. Rebel's side is what their plan is in regards to, you know, I read the report, I read through there, and in regards to now I know they're having a marshal because they didn't say that at first, but what, what's the plans? One warning, two warnings, ten warnings, or one time you're caught not doing the social distancing and doing the fist pumps and the high fives, golfing with a group instead of being on your own like you're supposed to? What is going to be the accountability? I think that's should be the one I think that, I mean, I think everybody should know what it is before you even start golf. I think it should be out there what our plan is on the accountability of the non-social distancing at the golf course. I mean, me, I'm, I want to see it open. I want to see it open for the average golfers, or else I want to see the non-average golfers. But does it shut down if I get caught? Or am I only kicked off, or do I only get a warning when I don't do it? Ms. Torval, is there a discipline plan at the moment yet? I know it's um, it's – we're all about adapting at the moment, so that, that could have been oversight. Sure. Uh, actually, in the report, it says that if the participants are following the rules, they will be asked to leave. Okay. Councillor Kukalka. Kicked out for the summer or asked to leave for that one day or for that one round. So on my last hole and coming up nine, I fist pump one of my councillor friends here, and I, I get asked to leave. Well, I'm already done anyways, or am I kicked out for the year? Ms. Torval. So, so just to illustrate to council, we have rules of play for the pro shop rule, store pro shop rule, rules of play for the, the course. These will be made up, big bullets, and, and again, with the marshal and staff, everybody, we're all going to be having a collective role here. We're going to try and educate, mm -hmm. right? And if it's blatant where it's to the point where you're just not getting it, then we're going to ask you to leave, mm -hmm. right? And, uh, you know, the intent would be to leave for that day. And if it happens to be on the ninth hole, 
<laughs> yeah. Yeah, and I suppose like repeat of films you could take to another level oh, as well, right? Sure, we'll document. Oh, we'll definitely document yeah. and everything like that. Yeah. Okay. Councilor Kakauka. Yeah, and I just have one other thing. I was going to talk to Ms. Torval about it, and I see that where it's the golf cart storage facility that we have uh, private members' carts in, mm -hmm. or private uh, owners of carts in there. And I see we're leaving it open. <clears throat> Touchless entry, it's going to be open the all, all the time. There's no consideration or no thoughts there that we'd be liable if somebody goes in and cuts locks off and takes people golf cart. So I get like some nights it's busy, some nights it's on. It starts raining and staff's busy and they don't notice that that's open and somebody goes out. I don't even know how many holes, 13 carts or something. What happens if we have five carts go missing? Who's liable? Good point. Yeah. Miss Torval. I can't answer that at the moment, but perhaps Mr. Bassani can answer that. I think it's like when you bring a bicycle to the community center, right? I think you have the onus to ensure that it's safe and that it's uh, secure. Um, the fact that we have the doors open, um, we have CCTV there as well. Okay. There's some deterrent there for us. So I think a requirement for those golf uh, carts, especially if they've got value, if you have value, mm -hmm. you're insuring it. Mm -hmm. I think the onus is on the owner of the golf course. Okay. Right? If we leave it open, in the middle of the night, hypothetically, well, then I think then the land or the owner has been, you know, has been, would bear the responsibility. But to map out all those contingencies and have someone come and steal something, it, it, it's, it's, you know, I, I would think that's why you have insurance. Like, you slept the cart. Is that, is that the town's responsibility? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, insurance for that. Councilor Kirby. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I think it's a keypad to punch in, and I think you have the proper hand sanitizers or, and, and cloths there. I think the the cart owners can take responsibility to make sure they're cleaning that. And I think having it closed at night should be a priority. It should be closed at night. And throughout the day, I you know, sometimes on busy busy days at the course, it's left open, but there's a lot of people around. I, I don't see c closing it being an issue at all. Mm -hmm. You know, we all have our own, you know, we take care of our own stalls, make sure everything is clean, clean the hand, clean the... <clears throat> The keypad, just have the proper stuff there too, and I, I think, I think you know, you pay for your club storage there. That, that should still be locked, and secured. Yeah, I, I would definitely be concerned about leaving it open overnight. It's, it's quite dark down there. Um, you know, just a pair of bolt cutters or even a sledgehammer will take care of that lock. So, um, I would be in favor of closing it uh, overnight for sure. Um, Councillor Hall. Yeah, I, I don't think we should change anything that we're doing with the uh, golf cart storage. I mean, the reason the door shuts on is to keep the dirt and dust out of there and rodents and stuff uh, from going in there as well, mm -hmm. right? But like what Councillor Kirby suggested, I think is perfect. You put a hand washing station out front. It's no different from any store that you walk into. You go into Northern Metallic, they've got a spot there where you wash your hands before you touch any goods. You wash the hands as you leave. Uh, to me, for people going in and out, we're all living this now. It's not mm -hmm. nothing new. We had two months of it, and you realize anytime you put your fingers on anything that you could be, mm -hmm. you could get it. So if we just have the hand washing station available, and I mean, at a minimum, that thing has to be closed at night. You cannot mm -hmm. leave it wide open all mm -hmm. night long. I mean, there's there's more than just the carts that we have to worry about. It's the damage to our own building that we could get into. We could get water damage in there. Mm -hmm. You could get rodent damage in there. God forbid you ever got bats in there. But, you know, I, I think that one needs to be changed for sure. Mm -hmm. um, and, yeah, and, and Councillor Crookow could touch on the other one that I was interested in too, so. Yeah, so I'll, I'd like to make a motion that uh, we continue the operation of the cart storage building as, uh, as is, uh, locking it in the evening, but to install a hand washing station at the keypad. Yeah. Seconder, Councillor Howe, discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Thank you. Any other discussion? Councilor Majinski? Yeah, thank you, Mayor. Um, I don't, I might, admit, I might have missed it. I don't know. I can't see it anywhere here, but uh, alcohol consumption on the golf course. I didn't see that anywhere. Uh, maybe somebody can enlighten me where it was and if it's going to be allowed and if it's going to be through the uh, 55 and how it's going to work and mm -hmm. keep open down because of. Mm -hmm. Good point. Uh, Ms. Torval? 
Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry, Ms. Councillor uh, I don't think we need to go to staff and all. And there's actually a sign when you come on the, down the trailway to the clubhouse, it states right there, no outside alcohol. Uh, that states right there, so to me that's all going to be bought from on site. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it states right there on that sign, no outside alcohol. Mm -hmm. so, I know what the ruling is through uh, through liquor control board if you're caught with bringing your outside alcohol out. Mm -hmm. A lot. It's, it's not a good one. Mm -hmm. Councillor Majinski. Yeah, I understand that, but are we actually going to be selling it and uh, allowing people to be drinking on the course? Because if they are going to be intoxicated, they're probably not going to follow the safe distancing rules because they forgot. So that's why I want to know if they're going to be continuing to do that. And if you know, there's going to be a minimum that they're going to have to buy, like if it's 20 for 6 or whatever deal or whatever, and everybody's going out and buying a whole whack load of beers and going out there and forgetting. So I don't know if there's rules in place to say, okay, or are they going to enforce that as well? If mm -hmm. you can play the players over the course. Mm -hmm. Councilor, uh, Councilor Norbury. Yeah, and I think when it comes to public intoxication, that's that's a legality issue, right? And I don't think we as a council should be telling people whether or not they can be, you know, having a couple of days on the course like they, they've always had, right? I don't think we should be um, restricting them from that. And it's, this is an opportunity, um, more um, initiative, initiative but more reason for the current operators down there to open it, that they can have this revenue going through i don't think this is something that we can make. like there's there's laws on public intoxication mm -hmm. yeah and it's possible that the new marshal position might get overloaded as well with a number of different factors so That'll have to be looked at again. Councillor Howell and Majinski. Yeah, so, so the way I understand it is Sorry. whoever's running the restaurant, which I think is Club 55 this year, they're the only ones that can serve alcohol or drinks or sandwiches or bars or chips or whatever on the beverage cart. So if they are in place and they choose to get the beverage cart out there and they can come up with some creative way to keep social distancing or, or however they want to do it, it's up to them to decide. And uh, to me, if we were to try to restrict that at this point, that then gets Club 55 coming back in and saying, well, you know, that's one of our good sales. We do really well with that. And now we can't do it. I, I, now I can't pay the lease at all, right? And I don't want to restrict them at all. I want them to try to be as successful as they are. And maybe this will actually help them. Maybe, maybe this will be a benefit for them to get out there and really hustle the grounds with a, a beverage cart. Mm -hmm. Councillor Kirby. Thank you, Mayor. Um, when I talked to Amber, uh, today they've already got their liquor license in place it was bought at the end of last year so they're ready to go so you know uh, with further direction from staff on their previous letter in the agenda um, they'd be willing to do you know sell the alcohol between what they've kind of specified as 10 to 2 4 to 9 so other than that it's always been the rule that you you don't bring your own liquor onto the course so that's doesn't change with COVID mm -hmm. Councilor Majinski. And that's why I asked the question about the, uh, I want to follow up with the, uh, the beverage cart and if they are able to actually utilize it this year, because I know that was a concern and I did talk to Ms. Bell about it, so. Okay. I'm make sure that that was a go. Okay. Councilor Krakowka. Yeah, I'm just wondering about other recommendations that, that some councils were talking about. One was a garbage can, and I believe the other one was benches. I don't want to steal their glory. Those motions are going to come probably <laughs> <laughs> Councilor Norby? Uh, I had it written down ago, but I'll, I'll leave it to the other councillors. Okay. Councilor so, Howe? I'll put a motion on the floor that uh, we re remove removal of benches from this list. Seconder? Councilor Majinski? Discussion? Councilor Norby? Just to clarify, instead of using a double negative, we're keeping the bench in the <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yes. yes. Correct. Any other comments? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Any other recommendations? Councillor Lehman. Oh, yes. I guess I will make a motion that we keep the garbage cans at the holes so that we limit the trash on the course. Seconder. Councillor Howe. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Thank you. <clears throat> Councillor Howe. I have one question for staff about one way uh, traffic of carts. I, I don't understand what that's for or how that works. Ms. Torval. Thank you, Mayor. I'll uh, get start to Mr. Pisani. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, Councillor. Again, we have a signage that uh, could illustrate that the flow uh, basically is going to be one way in. And same with the washrooms and, and the pedestrian traffic, one way in. 
in one way that's it out. So the carts will, when they're done, they will come around because they all have to be sanitized again, right? So there'll be a staging area for them. Uh, staff will sanitize them unless somebody owns, unless it's privately owned. And then the carts will get back into the, you know, the, the storage. storage area. So you're, you're, you're talking, sorry, just to Go ahead. have yeah. a direct conversation here, just around the uh, clubhouse area, not when you're out on the course. That, that's correct. Okay. That's correct. Okay. Yeah, but, but you have to maintain, so, well, we do have rules. You have to maintain the social distancing out on the course as well. Fair enough. Okay. Yeah. And just a, a point on the carts. So if, if you go through the rules, we're allowing one person per cart, unless we, they can demonstrate to us. Family member. Um, is a family member. And we also had some further debate today about what happens if they come in the same car, right? Mm -hmm. So that's something that we're staff is still considering. How would we even manage that, right? Mm -hmm. so. mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that'd be tough. Councilor Calcum. <clears throat> yeah, just something that staff has mentioned: if they come in the same car, that just defeats the purpose. <laughs> to me, if they're not from the same household, not as per the government regulations, then to me they have to be in their own car. Yeah. I mean, just because I go and pick up one of my council friends, I hope somebody's gonna go golfing. I'm pretty sure I should not come to your house and pick you up with my vehicle. That's against one of the orders. So if they decide that they're going to show up in the vehicle, they still should have to rent two cars unless they have the address on their driveway. Mm -hmm. That's just my personal opinion. I mean, that's something to stop to figure out. That's, that's scary. But put that out there. If they, if they come in the same vehicle, though, we're going to allow them to ride the same car. Mm -hmm. I mean, we might as well just all pick each other up then. That's right, yeah. There was, uh, there was one other thing here that says optional but I'd like to make a motion that we do erect a barrier on the service counter in the pro shop. Seconder? Oh yeah. Councillor Kirby. Discussion? Councillor Kalka. Yeah I was actually hoping staff I was in and talked to Mr. Bruno. I was hoping maybe something would have been talked about from staff side but you know, there may not be no need for us to be having people go into the pro shop. You know if they can erect another door on the outside where the main door comes in a half door that closes that doesn't hinder that door to close at night to lock to secure the building Nobody actually needs to come into the pro shop because they can extend their cables for their debit machines and their till. Mm -hmm. So you have a little counter. Nobody would need to come into the pro shop. The bags can be, the balls can be handed out that window to be under the shelter. Mm -hmm. It's almost like a half service counter at a, at a food uh, truck or whatever you want to call yep. it. Yeah, but I that way nobody saying. is coming into that pro shop. Good idea. Yep. I just, not, again, I'm not giving that direction, but it was something I didn't mention. I've seen it other places. Yeah, and this motion is, is obviously just for uh, safety of the staff working down there. They somebody at the um, cashier's desk can't uh, maintain two meters so um, just uh, picked up that it was optional on here and I think it should be installed. Councillor Norby? I think I think that's a good idea. I think it's, it's going to be it's, it is standard for a lot of uh, places now that there is some sort of you know sneeze guard so to speak it just limits staff's exposure because there may be times like Let's be realistic. Even even when you're taking a debit from somebody, you're not quite six feet away, and, and it's the, the six feet science is that's how far you know a sneeze or a cough can go, right? So I think it's it's not a it's, it errors on the side of caution, and I think that's where we should be in terms of risk management. Yeah, there there is a lot of anxiety for for staff members in every business working at this time, and and um, you know I, I do like the adaptations that all businesses have made to to keep their employees safe. Councillor Howell. I'm just going to remove myself for this portion of the, the, the debate there. It uh, affects my business. So okay. For this. Okay, thank you. Yeah, so uh, any other comments on the motion? I guess if, uh, if another alternative isn't available, then uh, the barrier would be installed if, if this goes through. Councillor Majinski. So do we have a motion on the floor directing staff to come up with cost measures and uh, a game plan on how to do this or how, how does this work going forward now? Well the motion on the floor is to erect a barrier on the service counter. Without just doing the, the door and half door? Yeah I, I wasn't aware of that option so. Councillor Cook. Yeah, so it wasn't an option. It was just something Mr. Torval and I talked about. And the reason I talked to her about that or just gave an idea <clears throat> is it concerns me that we're allowed to have two people in the pro shop plus two staff members. Mm -hmm. well, I'd like to be able to measure that. Mm -hmm. I don't think we have 24 feet that we can all stand apart from each other. Mm -hmm. It'd be pretty tight with two, two, two um, customers in there and then two staff members. Mm 
Yeah. And that's why I thought if you couldn't, there's a way of doing it so nobody has to enter the pro shop. I mean, it's like the public bathroom, which I'll be bringing up next, that's in there. It's the same concept. Right? So that's the only concern I have. Yep. Councillor Norby. And maybe this, rather than us trying to, you know, go and nitpick this whole thing, I'll really leave this to staff, right? It seems like staff is doing, um, with this report, we're saying that they take this stuff very seriously. They're really mm -hmm. trying to mitigate risk for us. Mm -hmm. And maybe this is a place for them to show their expertise. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I agree with you. Uh, any other comments on the motion? Call the question, all in favor? Opposed? Carried, thank you. Bring Councillor Hall back in, please. How is that a conflict? Maybe he's into the barrier business, I'm not sure. Lucrative right now. <laughs> <laughs> Councilor Kukalka. Yeah, again, and I mean, you might have been asked, I was going to talk to Mr. Rubble about the, the bathroom use inside the clubhouse. I understand they're going to leave the, the porter potties open to the, to the, on the course and that and have sanitations on the outside for sanitizing your hands on the way in and the way out. <clears throat> the concept of having staff out to clean those bathrooms after every use. So anytime somebody goes into the bathrooms that are in the, inside the pro shop now, to me, you're going to have a full-time staff member there mm. just to clean bathrooms. So... Instead of two staff members, you're having three. So, like, I, I don't, like, again, I'm not an avid gobber, so, I, I mean, that doesn't matter to me. That's what staff's going to do. That's fine. But just kind of concerning that, that we're doing that. <clears throat> Bathrooms were, were a cause of concern for me as well, just because of the extra cleaning, for sure. Councillor Howe? Can we not have cleaning stations in the bathroom and allow people to clean it themselves? Possibly. I don't like the alternative of not having a bathroom down there. I think that's a lot worse. <laughs> <You know? laughs> the bushes would be bad, yeah. yeah. Counselor. Like spread, but know? I think that's what the that's what the idea of the porta potties on the on the course. Mm -hmm. like, I'm not saying to shut them down. It's just the one at the clubhouse or in the pro shop. I mean, the clubhouse ones that they decide to open them up inside the um, restaurant for if people are grabbing need to use. So, I, I don't know. Just just a thought. I'm good with it. Staffs obviously looked into it. Mm -hmm. This is a concern, like when we we talk about this, when it comes to the to me in the budget, and we realize that, you know, instead of being $250,000 to run the golf course in 2020, it's $400,000. <laughs> and we've got to understand there's extra staff there. And I mean, I'm not I'm not trying to do staff's job and say to them here, this is going to be, a, could be an issue. This could be an issue. Mm -hmm. and I think we've got to be realistic when this comes back and realize that we lost a bit more money in 2020 than we actually thought we would. But it's going to be staff. Yeah. And I'm curious, I mean... If Miss Torval has enough budget for the golf course in regards to the extra staffing, with I mean, the budget isn't 100 percent passed yet. I mean, we haven't done the, the final reading, but you know that is a concern that maybe I'm not sure what the budget was. I didn't go right through it tonight, but I'm curious if there's enough for staffing in that budget. Okay, uh, Miss Torval, could you answer that? Uh, Mr. Sani. So we have the budget so that we put together based on normal operation. Right. We obviously were in unique times and we've had to hire a marshal would be a really good example. So I think you can, you know, based on that and based on more than likely lesser revenue, I, I think you can, based on the councillor's point there, that we are going to, the operating costs are going to go up. Mm -hmm. right. And yeah, to address the washrooms and all the other issues there, it, it's definitely just going to, it's a function of time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and I would imagine when that evaluation comes through too, if it's too much to to clean bathrooms every single use, it, staff will have to look at that again. Yeah. Councillor How? Uh, no, I'm good, man. Councillor Norbury. So I'm I'm kind of on the fence when it comes to the bathrooms. What we've seen is public washrooms have been shut down, like the the all, all of the shared washrooms outside are shut down because of uh, contamination risks. So I definitely have some concerns there, but on the other side, you know, we're, we're encouraging people to go out there, drink, have a good time. And, you know, not everyone can just go hop in the bushes. Maybe there needs to be signage, you know, at your own risk or something, you know. 
I'm a little concerned about it, but at the end of the day, like it's it's user choice. Yeah. Nine holes golf golf is hour. two hours. <laughs> Councilor Kirby. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I mean, I've used the golf course all the time. I think if we've all been in COVID now for a long period of time. I have no problem taking a spray bottle and a cleaner and paper towels myself. If I'm going to use the bathrooms at my own risk, I can wipe it down and clean it myself when I'm done. You know, just take some just take some accountability on yourself that you're using these facilities. I think cleaning the bathrooms once an hour is sufficient. And then just to let people know that this is what's happening. If you have a concern, take your own cleaning supplies. You can have paper towel in there. People can bring their own, you know, you've got lots of options out there. I think... I think we're adults and we can we can help too when we're getting to actually get out there and use the course. I agree. Councilor Majinski. Yeah, I think uh, Councilor Kirby had a really good point there in saying we have a disclaimer saying that our facilities are cleaned on a rotating basis, whether it's an hour or whatever see fit, you know, d during high times or whatever. I think that's actually a really good way to, to safeguard ourselves on that part of it. So. Mm -hmm. And also having the ability or products there if somebody wants to do a per before or whatever. Yeah. Okay. Any other discussion? Councillor Howe. Yeah, so the, uh, Mr. Pisani has uh, produced a document a couple of times in our in our conversations here today about the, the document that he's going to write up or that will be handed out when people come out to the, the golf course or whatever. Play. Uh, yeah, so, so maybe just a point that would be good would be have something that uh, when you're out on the golf course, if they have a number that they can text or call or email address that they can get a hold of somebody if they have any concerns of while they're on the golf course because this is a totally new thing and we're, we're all trying it and all trying to think through all the mm -hmm. the issues that we may run into and there may be something that we have not thought about at all that mm -hmm. may affect I don't know seniors or people with disabilities or something that we're not thinking about so if they have an easy way when they come to somebody like myself at the golf course how do I complain about this there's the number right how, who do I text text that person and then that information at least could filter back through you guys and you guys could make adjustments as you go for stuff that, you know, may, could be done. I, I just think that would be a good thing to add to your your, good point. your message there. So Yeah, great point. Any other discussion? Okay. Thank you very much to staff uh, for, for putting this together and, and all the efforts to bring this course opening. Thank you very much. Okay, 9.3, Community Child Care Space Creation Program, a report from the Director of Community Services and Facilities dated May 4th, 2020, seeking support of an application to the Child Care Space Creation Program. Recommendation, please. Councilor Majinski. Council supports the application to UPCM for the Child Care Space Creation Program and that Council approves a standalone daycare project grant management. Seconder, Councilor Kukalka. Discussion? Councillor Howe. Can I get a little more understanding around that council approves the standalone daycare project and grant management? What does that essentially mean? So the project that uh, is in the report, uh, council previously went through the three or four options of uh, a daycare project and supported the um, standalone daycare as well as the staff recommended that as well through uh, uh, scoring system and then so now we are applying to UBCM and the province for grant to hopefully build this project and we are approving the application for the grant and we are approving the management of the grant if received. Yeah. Okay, so my, my concern yeah. is this this is not going forward as a standalone uh, without the grant. Correct. Okay, that's what I was, the wording there gave me some concern. So I just wanted to clarify that we are not moving forward with this at this time until we see where we are with the grant. Correct, yeah. And just for council's um, information, we have been denied on the first attempt. So this is the second attempt. So... Um, I would assume if, if we aren't successful at this attempt, we're going to have to look at this again and come up with another idea. Councillor Nobry. Thank you. And to elaborate a little bit on that, because I, I did have questions. Okay, well, we're, we know how much things cost to build in Tumbler Ridge. 
you know, realistically, will this $1 million get us there? And we're not at that stage. We're not, th today we're not deciding. We're going with the, the standalone. That's why there's the other schematics in there. We still have to put this out to an engineer, see what can be built. No, no. Council decided on the standalone last year. And um, this, all those options are, are just from the previous report. But we have decided on the standalone project through resolution, yes. Okay, any other comments? Call to question, all in favor? Opposed? Carried, thank you. 9.4, Mayor's Economic Resiliency Task Force, a report from the Director of Economic Development and Tourism dated May 4th, 2020, seeking approval of two impact surveys for the Mayor's Economic Resiliency Task Force. Recommendation, please. Councillor Lehman. That Council approve the resident survey as presented and for it to be distributed to every mailbox in Tumbler Ridge together with a prepaid envelope. Didn't want to include the first part? I don't... Make them separate? I just didn't think we needed to email. Mm. Okay. We'll separate them then. Yeah. Seconder on that? Nor Councillor Norbury? Discussion? Councillor Norbury. I'd just like to add something. I noticed with the with the changes, there was more um, suggestions in in the surveys to give people guidance on what's available to them. I, really, I, really, I think that's a great initiative that was put forward in trying to you know, grow the knowledge of what it's going to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to uh, definitely give a shout out to our economic development um, department. Um, they've done an excellent job putting this together very quickly and uh, see the, the importance of this as well. And also, side note, uh, this week is Economic Development Week. Is that correct? International Economic Development. National Economic Development. International. In International. International. Sorry. So, good timing. Uh, any other comments? Okay. All in favor? Opposed? Carry. Thank you. Um, so I'll make the recommendation that Council approve the business impact survey as presented and for it to be distributed to the mailbox and or emailed to every listed Tumblr Ridge business together with a prepaid envelope. Seconder? Councilor Majinski, comments? Councilor Norbury? Um, I just had one point, and it's, it's a smaller one, about part of the business survey. Mm -hmm. It was um, question number three. Page 92? No. 98, I think. Sorry. 98. And my only comment here and is these values given, are they too vague? Maybe we should be adding percentages to these because my thought of no impact, slight impact, and especially the third one, impact, mm. I don't, I don't think it's very clear, but I mean, this isn't big enough to, to hold the whole process. Mm. My thought is maybe we do um, no impact, slight impact of 10 to 25 percent, um, significant would be 20 to 25, uh, 25 to 50 percent, substantial 50 to, to 100, um, just something along those lines so that we can get a little more information. Defined. Because it's just too vague. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree with you. Councillor Hall? Yeah, so if that was strictly uh, on revenue, I could see where that would be uh, valid. But because it talks about revenue supply chain and HR, there's different sections in that. It's a very subjective question. Maybe you've had a really hard time finding people, and so you, it's been a you know a substantial impact. I can't find anybody to move here to do this job. But financially, it hasn't been. You know what I mean? So it's a subjective thing, and I want to make my point known that it was a substantial impact, but mine was in the supply chain or something, right? They can't get me the products that I need here. So because it's not broken down by just revenue as a percentage, it's a little tough to, to, to peel that out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I see what you guys are saying. Definitely, Councilor Norbury. Then that, wouldn't that um, 
confuse the results of the survey because someone could be saying, I've had a substantial impact to my HR department, but almost nothing to my revenue. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Maybe we should just uh, either separate them all three or um, we could add like, um, what is your biggest uh, impact to your business? Um, either of those three or, yeah, I see what you're saying. It's, it is vague and it's uh, uh, three different parts of the business as well. Councillor Howell. And therein lies the problem with the surveys. It's subjective. You know, it's, it's the way I view the survey is the way you view the survey. Um, what I think is a big impact, you may not think is a big impact. And that's why I've never been a fan of these surveys and I still don't think they're a good way to judge what we need to do in the community. Okay. Any other comments? Councillor Norbert? I'd like to make a motion that we separate question number three in the business survey into separate questions regarding revenue supply chain and HR. Seconder? I'll second that. Discussion? All Councilor Norbury. Okay. Call the question. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Thank you. Good suggestions there. Any other comments, Councilor Kalka? Yeah. So mail, mailbox, and or email. So are we going to send two? So am I going to get one in my email, and I'm going to get one mailed to me? Like it says, or. Yeah. But how do we determine that? Yeah, maybe. Uh, Whether it's maybe email to some of us and only mail to some of the other ones? Hmm. Yeah, I, to be honest, I'm not positive. I would assume that this has a, a mailbox in town. But um, until I see the list, I, I don't really know that confirmed. I guess we could possibly get uh, Mr. Powell to explain, if you don't mind. Sure. Mr. Kelly? Sure. I. Uh... You know, I put that in because, you know, usually when I communicate with businesses, you know, via email, and most people do have email. Um, but having said that, you know, and, you know, and I thought, well, it could be a cost-saving measure as well uh, via email. But, you know, if council would prefer that both surveys to go out uh, via uh, mail, then I'm more than happy to do that. I mean, it might be that we could uh, put the resident and the uh, business surveys into one envelope. Mm -hmm. so, you know, that might be a cost saving in itself. But, uh, mm -hmm. Okay. How's council feel? Council? council Krakowka? I think it should be just email. I mean, I think most of the business, I mean, most times I deal with the talent part via email in my personal business. Mm -hmm. like, I mean, if we're going to mail out to every resident two surveys, one for business, one for residential, what stops me from filling with the business ones besides coming up with the numbers? Mm -hmm. It should just be emailed. I mean, if we don't have everybody's email contact, I'm pretty sure that's fairly easy to get. Yep. I think it would be a quicker process. Councilor Majinski? Yeah, well, I think that's a good idea is just have it through email. And I think even in our business directory, everybody has an email in there. Mm -hmm. It's a form of contact, so. Mm -hmm. Councilor Kirby? Thank you, Mayor. Are you going to be able to fill out the, the survey online? Is it going to be a document that you can... I think we can. Or you have to print and send back. They'll be able to. I think we can uh, make, yeah. it, make it uh, fillable on. Yeah. It says that in there too. Yeah. It says submit, but once you hit submit, it's sent. Okay. Yeah. So I'm assuming that's how they it's edit like it. like a yeah. surveyor's mm -hmm. motion. Sure. I'll make a. Our, we have this motion at the moment, so we could. We already, you already, well, you voted on the, the one. We voted on the resident three. one. So that's an amendment already. Yes. An amendment went through. Yes. Went through. Your amended motion went through. Yeah. yeah. So that's why I'm wondering about making it so that it's not mail and or. We could make email. an uh, amendment to this recommendation to to uh, delete mailbox and just distribute it by email to every listed Tumblr Ridge business. That's what I was asking. Can we do? You want? Yeah. We'd like to do that. We just do it by email to for the business impact survey. So an amendment to the, this recommendation. Okay. Seconder on the amendment. Councillor Kirby. Discussion? All in favor of the amendment? Opposed? Carried? Any other comments on the recommendation? 
Call the question on the amended recommendation. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Thank you. Okay, schedule of meetings. Any issues there, Council? Ms. Torval? Mr. Powell wanted to speak there. Go ahead. Can I just uh, clarify? So, is are both the surveys approved uh, subject to changes? Correct. So, if I separate the uh, question three of the, uh, the business survey out, then that's approved that can go out? Correct. Great. Um, and also, I wanted to just get a clarification as to the deadline for submissions to both on, on both of the, uh, the surveys. Sorry, I didn't put out another. Uh, I think uh, I think these surveys should go and um, be approved by the task force members as well. Okay. And then the task force can um, can decide on deadlines. Okay. Yeah. Councilor Kalka. Yeah, I was going to say that you think it should be the task force, but if there's any change by the task force, that should come back before council. I would hope. Material changes. Yeah. We're wording changes to the questions or whatever. To the questions. Back question, yeah. We come back before council. Yeah. Thanks. You bet. And um, just to update, uh, got nine people confirmed on for the task force. I'm just uh, working on possible two more, but uh, it's looking good so far. Um, notice of motions. Any notice of motions? <laughs> Councillor's business. Thank you, Councillor Norbury. Councillor Norbury. Yeah, I'd like to bring up um, the continued issue of uh, animal control in our municipality. I, I know that there was an issue down on, um, I know there's an issue in our town over the weekend on uh, the area of Bergeron, and I'm glad to hear that uh, Bylaw was contacted and Bylaw took care of that issue. You know, additionally, I was, I spoke with, uh, I've been speaking with multiple residents about this issue. There was another person who gave me information about issues they had in, uh, on April 21st upon, upon Gwilym. You know, there was a, you know, a, a girl got a dog for her birthday, went out walking the dog with her, you know, with her grandmother, went out walking, and there was a, a dog loose you know, up, up in that area. And, you know, this is this is a big issue. People are, are saying that they are feeling like they are um, stuck in their homes. They can't go out. The um, areas of our town are being going to the extreme, but they're kind of being held hostage to these out-of-control dogs. You know, people are, are afraid. Like when when we saw uh, Miss Turner post about, uh, when they posted about the dog bite, people were asking, well, where, where is this? So I can stay away. Is that fair to our residents that, oh, I'm sorry, you're not allowed to go down the street anymore because there's, there's a dog out there. There's an aggressive dog, and this, this family is not um, doing their due diligence in, in dog ownership. You know? And, you know, that really just upsets me knowing that Areas where community are off limits to some people do 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 this issue. You know, I'm, I'm not knocking our bylaw. I know they're doing all that they can, and and the people that I'm speaking to, I'm encouraging talk to bylaw, mm -hmm. and they are, which is which is where we need the, the chain of command to be going. But, you know, yeah, I just wanted to share that. Yeah, no, it's uh, certainly top of mind at the moment. Um, update: We have uh, a report that we've asked for coming uh, back to us next Monday. <laughs> With options um, for that, and and um, yeah, we'll discuss it next Monday. Councilor Krakowka. Just on the auction items, just gonna follow up on the ORV permits. I was in regard to the golf cart uh, pilot program. Have we heard anything back yet? Yeah, I spoke with Miss Torval about that today, and she's going to follow up with that. Um, because as far as the status goes, I wasn't involved in a conference call with any ministry. Now, we're not positive if, if uh, that conference call was for Chase or if that conference call was us. Um, so, Ms. Torval is going to be following up with that. Councillor Krakow. I believe that conference call was a staff. Mm -hmm. That was what we were report, recorded, reported to last time in regards to that. But I'm just curious where it sits. Yes. Yeah. So, I understand the conference call happened and it happened with our CAO. Okay. I'm not sure if any, any other staff was involved, but you know, that's that's something that we've we've wanted to push through or push up, and we want to do the piloting. I mean, we're going to be opening the golf course or something like that. So I mean, this is an opportunity to yep. have better access. Yep, I agree. Nice. 
Hope that this and uh, yeah, try to get some more information on that. Better staff, at least, anyway. Uh, any other councillors' business? Uh, I had a few meetings here over the last couple weeks. Uh, had a meeting with South Peace Collaborative Services Committee. That's uh, a health services committee throughout the South Peace. Uh, it was very informative, um, kind of a state of the union sort of address from our, our local chief medical officer. Um, had a coalition meeting, a resource municipalities coalition meeting, and also a, a conference call with Minister Ralston from uh, Mines and Petroleum. Um, I'm also involved in the Caribou Snowmobile Committee meetings. Um, we've put together a committee now and is starting to move along as far as uh, uh, coming up with a plan. Um, and I was involved in the Gotta Go project conference call as well. Um, basically that project is looking to um, eventually over the next five years roughly um, construct some more uh, uh, pullouts and washroom areas on, along the Alaska Highway. Okay, any others? Question and answer period? Nope. Is, is, that, is that being, I know I've, I mean. Go ahead. I know I've posted it on there, but you know, maybe this is an opportunity to explain how they can ask a question. Right, I know staff has shared it on Facebook. I know I've, I've shared the same post that staff has put out there, but maybe this is an opportunity for the worship to let people know that may be watching. This is how they can send a question in to our CAO, who in turn will bring it to a meeting and, and it'll be asked. Sure. Ms. Torval, would you mind explaining? Any uh, residents are watching our live stream, if they have questions for the question and answer period, they can uh, put their question in an email, uh, email to cao at dtr.ca and come to a chance to address the questions. Perfect. Thank you. Good suggestion. German recommendation, please. Council Krakowka. <laughs> Let the money made for 2020 Raider Council meeting be adjourned. Seconder, Council Majinski. All in favor? Carried. Thank you. Sorry.